Welcome to Concept in Medicine. In today's session, we are going to be looking at how carbon dioxide is excreted from the body. Let's begin by looking at what takes place at the cellular level. As you know that a combination of cells will give us tissues. So at a cellular level, the cellular metabolism takes place by the processes such as the glycolysis and the Krebs cycle. And the byproducts of these two processes which take place in the cell will be the carbon dioxide. And remember that with regards to these two processes, the carbon dioxide production is going to take place in different organelles. If we take the glycolysis, the carbon dioxide production will take place in the cytoplasm, specifically the cytosol, that is the fluid in the cytoplasm. But if you think the Krebs cycle, the citric acid cycle, the production of carbon dioxide will take place in the mitochondria. So with the carbon dioxide being produced, capillaries which run to the cell, and we know that capillaries has two ends. We have the arteriolar end and the venular end. So this is the capillary, this is the arteriolar end of the capillary, and this is the venular end of the capillary. Definitely the venular end is where you are going to have the carbon dioxide diffusing into. And the arteriolar end definitely has oxygen. So at the level of the cell, you will have oxygen being exchanged for carbon dioxide. Why would that happen? Because of the differences in partial pressures, meaning that the partial pressure of carbon dioxide in the cell after metabolism will be very high and the partial pressure of oxygen in the cell after cellular respiration will be very low. So due to that gradient, you have carbon dioxide diffusing readily through the phospholipid membrane of the capillaries into the blood in the capillary, specifically at the venular end. Then we have oxygen going in reverse. When that happens, we will take this biconcave disc as the red blood cell. So with that, the moment carbon dioxide diffuses into the red blood cell, it is going to meet water which is contained in the red blood cell. And in the red blood cell too, we have hemoglobin. Quickly, the water in the red blood cell will react with the carbon dioxide which has diffused into it. And this reaction is going to be catalyzed by the enzyme carbonic anhydrase. Carbonic anhydrase catalyzes this reaction such that the water and the carbon dioxide would react to form what we call the weak carbonic acid, that is H2CO3. And H2CO3 is a very weak acid. Hence, dissociate immediately to give us hydrogen ions and bicarbonate ions. So this reaction is driven forward by the Le Chatelier principle. It is the Le Chatelier principle that drives this reaction forward. So at the end of this reaction, we'll be having bicarbonate ions in the red blood cell. And where does the hydrogen ion go? The hydrogen ion quickly goes to react with the hemoglobin. And when you react with the hemoglobin, it forms what we call the acidic hemoglobin, or also known as hemoglobinic acid. What is the advantage of this product? When you have the acidic hemoglobin, what it does is that it decreases the affinity of the hemoglobin for carbon dioxide. So in the presence of an acidic hemoglobin, the hemoglobin loses its affinity to carbon dioxide. Its affinity decreases with respect to carbon dioxide. And at the same time, can be acting as a buffer. So if there is any alkaline medium, it can easily what, buffer the alkaline because this is an acidic hemoglobin. Okay, so in the red blood cell now we have the bicarbonate ion and the hemoglobinic acid. And in the serum, what are we going to have? We are going to have the chloride ions. So the high concentration of the bicarbonate ion in the red blood cell would cause a gradient such that the bicarbonate ion will be exchanged 
for chloride ions which are abundant in the serum down the concentration gradient so we we'll have the bicarbonate ion shifting into the serum in exchange for chloride ions so at the end of the reaction bicarbonate ion would move into the serum and the chloride ions in the serum will move into the red blood cell this is accomplished by the help of the bicarbonate chloride transporters which are found in the red blood cell membrane so with that the exchange takes place and that is referred to as the chloride sheet or also known as the hamburger effect when that is done what are we going to have next so by the end of that reaction we we'll have the chloride ion now in the red blood cell and the bicarbonate ion now in the serum and we will have our hemoglobinic acid or the acidic hemoglobin in situ here then the transportation goes on then this blood will be transported to where the lungs once the blood gets into the lungs we are going to have the chloride ions shifting out of the red blood cell in exchange for the bicarbonate ion in the serum so in that case the reverse reaction which took place here will be what taking place here at the end of the reaction we we'll have the bicarbonate ion going into what, the red blood cell and the chloride ion coming out into the serum and at the end of that you are going to see the acidic hemoglobin liberating the hydrogen ion to react with the bicarbonate ion which has now entered into the red blood cell and that reaction is going to be the hydrogen ion plus the bicarbonate in a reversible reaction giving us h2co3 which is the weak carbonic acid then the weak carbonic acid we know that is not stable hence dissociate immediately to give us water and carbon dioxide and once again remember that this reaction it is also going to be driven forward by the Le Chatelier principle so at the end of that reaction what are we going to have we are going to have water and carbon dioxide in the red blood cell the hemoglobin next is the carbon dioxide formed now in the red blood cell will diffuse readily into the alveolus of the lung and the alveolus containing a higher concentration of oxygen will make it possible for the oxygen to diffuse into the red blood cell where it will be binding with hemoglobin to give us what we call oxyhemoglobin and the carbon dioxide will be diffusing out of the red blood cell into the alveolus where it will be excreted via the process of expiration out of the lungs so with that we will see the process of excretion of carbon dioxide is completed so in reverse you have the oxygen binding with the hemoglobin giving us oxyhemoglobin which will be carried in the blood to the tissues and then given to the tissues in exchange for carbon dioxide at the level of what the cells or the tissues so that is how carbon dioxide is excreted from the woman body but again that is not the only way the carbon dioxide can also be excreted in a form of what dissolved gases meaning that it will not react with water it will be found in the extracellular i mean fluid it will just be in the extracellular fluid and it will be carried all the way to the lungs where it will get to the alveolus and when it gets to the alveolus what will happen the high level of oxygen in the alveolus would decrease the hemoglobin affinity for the carbon dioxide so what will happen is that in the extracellular fluid as i was talking about the carbon dioxide is going to bind to what hemoglobin to give us what you call cap amino hemoglobin and it will be transported in the form of cap amino hemoglobin all the way to the lungs and when it gets to the lungs high concentration of oxygen in the alveolus will reduce the affinity of hemoglobin for the carbon dioxide causing the carbon dioxide to dissociate for the hemoglobin and being liberated into the alveolus and expired 
which will lead to the excretion of the carbon dioxide. And why does the affinity of the hemoglobin for carbon dioxide reduce in the presence of what high oxygen concentration in the alveolus? What happens is that oxygen concentration being high causes the hemoglobin to become acidic. And when the hemoglobin is acidic, it reduces its affinity for carbon dioxide. So if there is carbon dioxide binding to the hemoglobin, it becomes weaker, the bonds become weaker, and it is easily dissociated from the hemoglobin and what excreted by the process of expiration. But again, let's have a look at certain terminologies here. When you have oxygen binding to hemoglobin, we call that oxyhemoglobin. We call it oxyhemoglobin because the oxygen has a specific binding site on the hemoglobin. So when it binds to that, I will say oxyhemoglobin. But how then do we call carbon dioxide binding to what? Hemoglobin. We will call that cap amino hemoglobin. Why? Because the carbon dioxide has a different binding site on the hemoglobin. We call that site the amino terminal of the hemoglobin. Because it's called amino terminal of the hemoglobin, if you are having carbon dioxide binding to the amino terminal of hemoglobin, then we'll say that that is what? Carbon dioxide, that is cap binding to the amino terminal. That's amino of what? Hemoglobin. So we call it cap amino hemoglobin. I believe you get that as well. Then finally, when you have carbon monoxide binding to hemoglobin, we call that carboxy hemoglobin. Then somebody will be asking, why is it called carboxy hemoglobin? This is the trick. The trick is that carbon dioxide is the gas which has the greatest affinity for hemoglobin. And it has the same binding site as oxygen. So the binding site to hemoglobin by oxygen is the same as that of what? Carbon monoxide. So if you have carbon monoxide coming in, which has a greater affinity for hemoglobin than oxygen, then it displaces the oxygen and takes it binding site. So we we'll say that carb, that is carbon monoxide, coming to bind to the oxygen binding site, that is oxy, then that of what? Hemoglobin. So we call it carboxy hemoglobin because carbon monoxide displaces oxygen from its binding site on what? Hemoglobin and takes its place. That is why we call it carboxy hemoglobin, meaning carbon monoxide taking the binding site of oxygen on hemoglobin. Thank you very much for following through the session. Kindly make sure to subscribe to my channel, like, share, and also don't forget to comment the next concept you would like to see on my channel. My name is Dr. Dell, and this is Concept in Medicine. Bye-bye.